Welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Over the last couple of years on our farm, we've had some really dry conditions. And that's one of the reasons we're doing everything we possibly can to drought proof our crop. We'll explain on today's show. Well, we also had some areas where nothing grew and we're going to be dealing with some fallow syndrome in those spots of the field. We'll talk about the problems that could arise for your crop and solutions you could use. We have a Weed of the Week coming up later in the show too. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. For farmers to manage their fields, it's very similar to how you manage your own health. You have to take a blood test now and then. When a doctor takes a look at you, if he wants to find out what's going on with your body, he likes to take a blood test and he says, oh, this is a little out of whack, and here's a medication we can prescribe to fix it, or here's a diet that we can prescribe, or here is something we can do in terms of exercise to try and get things better. For farmers in their fields, they take soil tests to help diagnose what's going on. On a soil test, a farmer can learn all kinds of different things, just like you can in your blood test. One of the most important things, and in fact, the most important thing we always talk to farmers about is looking at the soil pH. What we want for a soil pH in most crops, the ideal is about 6.8. 7 on the pH scale is neutral, so just slightly on the acidic side of neutral, that's about ideal, and we want to be roughly 6.3 to 7.3. In that kind of range, we don't have a lot of pH issues, but if a farmer had a 5 pH or an 8 pH, he's losing significant yield in almost any crop he's going to raise. We've got to get that soil pH fixed, and that's obviously something the farmer can do once he knows he has the problem. Well, one other thing that farmers will look at on a soil test is something called base saturation. And what it does is it really compares a ratio of nutrients. So you may say, well, you're really high in calcium, but how high is that compared to magnesium and compared to potassium and sodium and hydrogen? It's the same thing on your blood test that you may look at what your cholesterol level is. Well, is it your good cholesterol or is it the bad cholesterol? And what's the ratio between the two? Farmers are looking at these ratios in their soils as well to figure out how they need to address certain issues. One of the big concerns for non-farmers is that farmers may be over applying fertilizer. And for some reason, fertilizer, which is just plant food, has gotten a negative connotation. I don't understand how that can possibly be, but I imagine it's just like here in the United States where, you know, around the rest of the world, food is viewed as this thing that everybody has to have. Here in the United States, we way overdo it, so we get all worried about you know, people overeating. Trust me, farmers are not overusing fertilizer. And the reason why I say that is fertilizer costs a lot of money. The goal for a farmer is to stay in business. The goal is to make money, and he's not gonna waste money on excess fertilizer. But what a farmer can do to know how much fertilizer his soil can hold at any one time is a test called cation exchange capacity. For example, if you take cation exchange capacity and multiply that number times 10, it will tell a farmer roughly how much nitrogen his soil can hold at any one time. One other thing that we would advise farmers to do on their soils to figure out how to fix things and how to treat their soils right is take a complete analysis. It's much like you. If you go to get just basic work done, like check your blood pressure, for example, that tells you a few things. But when they run a complete workup on your body, they can do a lot better job diagnosing what issues there are and dealing with them. For farmers, it's running tests on micronutrients as well as the big nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium that their crop is going to need. So once again, when we think about a blood test for a human being, it's about the same thing as a farmer doing a soil test. It's getting readings on a number of different things that are going to affect overall health. Because if we don't have a healthy soil, we are not going to have a healthy crop. Well, the other thing we'll have to do to have a good crop is stop weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? What's next in weed control technology? Roundup Ready 2 Extend Soybeans will provide tolerance to dicamba and glyphosate and will be built on the Genuity Roundup Ready to Yield trade. See them in action at extendfollowafield.com. If you could see how nitrogen loss causes yield loss, you'd fix it. So fix it right. With the stabilizer proven to reduce all three ways nitrogen escapes. Nutrisphere N Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager. 
it keeps nitrogen in a more readily available form longer. With today's market and environment, it's a high priority to keep your nitrogen on track. To higher yield with Nutrisphere N. With spring right around the corner, get your Case IH equipment ready with Titan Machinery's Uptime Maintenance Program. Uptime is Titan's preventative maintenance inspection designed to eliminate costly downtime during the short planting season. Our technicians average nearly 10 years of experience and use a comprehensive Case IH factory checklist to find potential problems before they slow you down. Use your Titan Access account and make no payment and pay no interest until spring 2014 for qualifying uptime specials. Plant worry-free with Titan Machinery. Better solutions. Your equipment's ready. The seed's in the barn. You have a strategy to overcome the challenges you'll face and your crop protection products are pretty well locked in, but maybe you still haven't finalized your fertilizer plans. If not, visit agroliquid.com today. With products formulated for superior nutrient uptake, unsurpassed application flexibility, and proven by years of extensive research, this may be the season to take your yields to the next level using agriculture liquid fertilizer. For lower cost, higher production, Mandeco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly, spring or fall. The Mandeco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandeco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. A proven herbicide for decades, dicamba can provide burn-down residual control of tough and resistant weeds for up to 14 days. That's another reason why farmers will use dicamba for years to come. Brought to you by Roundup Ready Plus Weed Management Solutions. One of the big issues that farmers will have if they don't raise a crop on a field for a particular year or have anything growing in that field is they'll get something called fallow syndrome. And what it really amounts to, what fallow syndrome really is, is the fact that you've had beneficial bacteria and especially beneficial fungi in the soil die. The problem with that is many of these bacteria and fungi can help bring nutrients into plants. It's crazy how our soil works and all the stuff that's going on in the soil, but just because you have fertilizer out there doesn't mean it's going to get into the plant. Well, in some drier areas of the country, farmers will intentionally fallow trying to store up enough moisture over a two-year time period to be able to raise one crop, for example. And that's fine for gathering moisture. The challenge for those guys is oftentimes that we end up with some fallow syndrome out there. We don't have crops growing for all that uh, soil life to be feeding on. So in some cases, those farmers are switching out of that rotation, trying to raise a crop every year, or at least using a cover crop out there in times where they don't get a crop planted that way they can try and keep the soil life going. We saw the same thing this year in areas that had excessive rain across southern Minnesota, northern Iowa. Some guys that had always planted a crop had never had a year they couldn't get the crop in. Well, this was the year they couldn't get all their acres in. And so many of those guys put a cover crop in just trying to keep that soil life going out in their field to avoid having a fallow yeah, syndrome and, issue. Yeah, and that's great, but they're probably still going to have a little bit of an issue because when soil sits with too much water, that means it has no oxygen. So if you've got a very high water table all the way up to the soil surface, and in fact it's flooded out with no oxygen down in that soil profile, pretty soon any plants that were there die. A lot of bacteria, some of the fungi, some of the beneficial things, beneficial insects even, or earthworms that are in your soil, some of those things are going to start to die off. That's bad, and you can't replenish those in just a couple of months with a cover crop, but it really will help. Well, here's the challenge though, Brian, is what kind of value do we put on those little bacteria and know. fungi out in soils because yep. we just don't understand them completely yet. However, we are starting to understand certain strains of them that work in the soil, like for soybeans, for example. Guys that raise soybeans every other year or every year, they may say, you know, I have a lot of the rhizobia bacteria that I need to make nodules on my roots in my soil, I may not get as much of a benefit out of inoculant and inoculating those soybean seeds that I'm planting every year. I disagree with that thinking, but there are quite a few people that believe that because there will be 
some of those bacteria that will be out in the soil at a certain level and you still will see nodulation on your beans. But when we have this fallow syndrome, we see a greatly reduced nodulation on the soybean roots. And this is a spot where inoculant could pay even more than it normally would. The job of those bacteria is to take nitrogen from the air and bring that into our soybean plants so we don't have to apply all that nitrogen plant food out in our fields. Well, we as farmers really don't understand all this soil life stuff going on. We know it's important. There actually are some tests out there that can be run to see your overall soil life and overall soil health. Midwest Labs, for example, out of Omaha, we do our soil testing there. They've got a test that, you know, I'll be honest, we've never even run it on our farm on a regular basis, but we've seen a couple of tests and we say, oh, that is kind of interesting. Maybe we're going to have to start thinking about testing that more. But especially we would test it if we had flooded soils, if we had fallowed soils, that's what we're most interested in. Now, if you want to build that soil life back up again, we encourage you to use some biological products, whether it's inoculant or there are other beneficial bacteria and fungi products out there. You can also put some manure out. Again, we encourage you to do some cover crops. And above all else, you got to go into the season thinking, you know what? I may have my normal levels of P and K and all these other nutrients in the soil. I'm going to bump that up 10% more than normal just to be on the safe side because otherwise we've seen way too many times where the corn turns purple or the corn turns yellow or something happens bad to your plant early in the season that you don't want to have happen because of fallow syndrome. And you know what's funny too, Brian, is sometimes those areas of the field where crop doesn't grow, we still have plenty of weeds <laughs> growing out there yep. like our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? Whether you're feeding cattle, milking cows or baling hay, the work on your farm is never done, which is why you need equipment that works as hard as you do. Get the efficiency and versatility you need with Case IH. From farm all compact and utility tractors to balers and mowers, all Case IH equipment is designed with one thing in mind, getting the job done. To learn more, visit caseih.com livestock. Looking to maximize yield? Quickroots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quickroots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quickroots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your quick roots today. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit farmlogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Capella corn headers are designed for producers who expect more. Expect more grain in your bin. Expect an industry-leading two-year manufacturer's warranty. Expect Capella design chopping and folding options that save you time and money. And whether red, green, or yellow, expect row size options that fit your operation because all producers deserve the best. Expect Capello. It's a head above the rest. If you watch Ag PhD TV, you'll love the new Ag PhD radio show each weekday on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. This is Darren Hefty. On the new Ag PhD radio program, we'll take live callers and provide the agronomic information and brotherly banter you've come to expect from Ag PhD. We'll feature a Back 40 segment where we talk to farmers and agronomists around the country to share what's going on with crop production. And it wouldn't be Ag PhD without addressing a pest of the day. Tune in to the Ag PhD radio show each weekday at 2 p.m. Central on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. Over the last couple of years, we've had a lot of dry conditions throughout much of the Midwest. So we've talked to a lot of farmers about what they can do to drought proof their crops. And we've thought about that even in our own operation. We wanna have the most drought tolerant crop possible. There are many steps you can take besides just planting drought tolerant seed. The number one thing in terms of drought proofing your crop is making sure you have a good root system down there. Now there are obviously many steps to getting a good root system, but where I always like to start is, let's talk about drain tile. If you have tile in the ground, even tile just down at three feet deep, you can keep that water table down and roots grow so fast early in the season, you don't even realize 
that you've got this tiny little plant there with a huge root on it already. So you want to make sure that you have your tile line down at, like I say, three feet. So your water table is down there so you can get three feet of growth on that root early in the season. What happens too often is you get a foot of growth, you get a foot and a half of growth and then your roots die. Nothing goes below that because the water table is too high early in the spring and the roots are getting established and then later in the summer you say man I wish I had deep roots. Well it all started from way back early in the spring when you were cool and wet you didn't give your plant enough room to grow deep roots. Well drainage tile is one thing and getting that water table controlled is a big deal but also so compaction brand when we think about just yep. the plow pan that we've made, maybe at six or eight inches deep, and then the natural compaction layer that's often at 14 to 17 inches deep, depending on where you're at and if you've had some soil erosion and those kind of things. If we can slice through those layers of compaction, we can allow our roots to get down. Then let's talk about nutrients just a little bit. We've discussed on previous shows nutrient stratification. When you don't have nutrients down where the water is, that's not a good thing. You know that those top few inches of soil are going to dry out when you have a dry period in in the summer but yes there's moisture down below and your roots can get that moisture if they aren't bringing any nutrients up with that moisture though it doesn't do you a whole lot of good and then let's carry it a step further if you have the right balance of nutrients and the right amount of nutrients in your soil at all times you have a much more drought tolerant crop because did you know that if your crop is short on any one nutrient what it's going to start doing is it's going to start pulling in more water even though it might not need more water it is pulling in water because that's how most nutrients get into plants. So you, in effect, by not having the right fertility, the right balance of fertility, the right amount of fertility, the right placement of fertility, you have made your crop a lot less drought tolerant. One other thing that a lot of people kind of take for granted, and we forget about this because it seems so basic, but having just unbelievably good weed control is a huge deal when you get into a drought. When your crop is suffering for lack of moisture, you just can't afford for something else to be taking that moisture away. For that reason, pre-emerge herbicides are just critical. Kind of the last thing too is just reducing your tillage. We've switched to uh, no-till a number of years back and now more recently we've been doing strip-till for quite a few years and doing less tillage on our farm certainly helps. Every time you're doing tillage, you're releasing some of that moisture back out of the soil. That's made a difference for us. Yeah, but one of the reasons why that reduction in tillage is important too is we're trying to build our organic matter. If you have more organic matter in your soil, you have more water holding capacity. So do what you can to build that organic matter. All these steps are really important and can you accomplish all of them in one year? No, but it's about the long-term process, trying to drought proof your crop, trying to build up your soil, trying to help your ground become fit to handle any weather condition rather than just ideal conditions. Well, one other thing, as we mentioned before, to drought proofing your crop is getting great weed control. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Your farm tells a story, one that continues with the decisions you make. Introducing the Enlist Weed Control System an advanced herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate for exceptional control of tough weeds. The next chapter begins. Our Weed of the Week is one of the worst that a wheat farmer can get. It's wild oats. When you think about grass control, you know, for our farm, we raise primarily corn and soybeans. It's foxtails. We're talking about green foxtail and giant foxtail, yellow foxtail, and all the focus gets on what many farmers will term pigeon grass. But when it comes to foxtails and wheat, they're not nearly the competitor that wild oats is. No, one wild oats plant, they say, can rob just as much yield as 10 foxtail plants. So this is a major problem. It's especially an issue in spring wheat. In winter wheat, we don't have as much problem, but we can have the issue there as well. So we wanted to talk about that just a little bit today about how we're going to address it in wheat, but it can be an issue in some other crops too. All right, when we think about wild oats, it's a little bit different than some of the other grasses. A lot of the pre-emerge herbicides that we use in corn, for example, you know, they may not be as effective on wild oats as they are in green foxtail. For example, when you look at Surpass, Harness, Dual, Outlook, they're not the best choice, like when we talk about foxtail control, well, they are the best choice. The best choice in corn has been eradicane. 
for years, that's yep. been the one that's just a little bit better on wild oats. The downside, of course, to using eradicane is that you have to incorporate it instantly, and you really should probably incorporate it twice if you want to have it work 100%. Well, once Roundup crops came out, though, a lot of people weren't too worried about eradicane, so you don't even see a lot of eradicane used today. I mean, we're seeing all these Roundup resistant weeds, but wild oats is definitely not one of them. So if you have Roundup corn, if you have Roundup soybeans, the Roundup's going to do an excellent job. Otherwise, I mentioned soybeans there. It's pretty easy to stop wild oats and soybeans. Use Sonalan, Treflan, or Prowl. Any of those are going to do just fine, especially if you're using a decent rate. And then post-emerge, we've got plenty of grass killers like Select Max, Assure, Post Plus, all these products. They'll do just fine on wild oats as long as you use a decent rate. Even the maximum labeled rate might be needed to get complete control because, again, wild oats is a little bit tougher than what foxtail control is. All right, so let's talk about wheat just a little bit. And here's where wild oats is pretty tough to control, but there are some strategies that you may not have considered using before. For example, what do you use for a pre-emerge herbicide in your wheat? I asked that question to wheat farmers all across the country, and a majority of them say, what are you talking about? They're pre-emerge choices. I do everything post-emerge in wheat. Here's where wild oats control could get much easier for you. There's a pre-emerge product called Prepare that has the same active ingredient that you would find in Everest 2.0. It just doesn't have the crop safener for use in crop. We do a great job on foxtails. We do a really pretty good job on wild oats control as well. And even some of the tougher grasses like cheat, it has activity on. So Prepare, the normal use rate is 0.3 ounces per acre. And that's fine if your pH is 7 or below. It's ALS chemistry, so it's a little different mode of action than some of the post-emerge grass products that you may have been using. And it's more active when the pH is high. So we are seeing some farmers across the country that are actually cutting the rate back to 0.2 ounces per acre and having pretty good luck in higher pH soils. That doesn't work very well if you have lower pH soils. Again, I'm not making a recommendation here. The label says 0.3 ounces, but when you get higher pH soils, it's much more active. So you do risk some potential crop injury especially if you overlap or something like that if you're using the extreme high-end labeled rate. Okay, let's talk about post-emerging wheat. Here's the big question. Are you going to spray the grass killer by itself or are you going to tank mix? Because there's antagonism anytime you're going to mix a grass killer together with a broadleaf killer. So if I had 10 million wild oats plants out in the field, I would absolutely put the pre-emerge herbicide on. I'd go out with the post product, maybe Axial, Discover, Puma, something like that. I'd use the full labeled rate and I'd spray it all by itself. If you only have 10 wild oats plants in the whole field, by all means, mix your grass killer together with your broadleaf killer and it'll be good enough. But just understand if you've got serious pressure out there, you've got to make sure you're split applying the grass product from the broadleaf product. And speaking of those grass products, we believe that Axial is probably the best, especially in a tank mix situation, but Axial is probably the best one on wild oats. But like I say, Discover and Puma also have activity. Gold Sky has some activity as well. The other thing when we're talking about these grass killers post emerge in wheat, there are really only two chemical families. We have that ALS family like we talked about with Prepare, Everest 2.0, Gold Sky, and a number of other products. But when we're thinking about the other family, the ACCase inhibitors, we're looking at Discover, Puma, and Axial. So if you're having issues with wild oats control in your area, there's a potential that it could be resistant to one family or the other. So just make sure you're checking with the land grant university in your area about weed resistance in your area. If guys are having trouble with one of the families, it's a good thing we've got two choices. The other thing is, if you're not having problems, rotate a little bit. Maybe you're using that prepare pre-emerge. Great. You've got an ALS product out there already. Now let's use the ACCase inhibitors post-emerge. And that's the reason why I didn't mention Everest 2.0 post-emerge. Everest 2.0 is actually very good on wild oats. It's just if you're using prepare, you don't want to use Everest post-emerge because it's the same chemical family. You're repeating that mode of action or site of action. Let's switch that up. Use the ALS down. Use the ACCase post if you can. Well, wild oats is certainly a tough weed, especially if you've got it in wheat. Use a two-pass approach with the pre-emerge herbicide, and if you have a lot of pressure, spray your post-emerge grass product separate from your broadleaf product. Well, that's all the time we have for our Weed of the Week, but stay tuned. Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. What are farmers doing to feed the planet? They're using Quadtrek technology, soil management, and planting systems from Case IH to foster a better growing environment that maximizes yield potential. Visit CaseIH.com to be ready.
If dry insecticide is your choice for corn rootworm protection this spring, but you need a system to apply it, we'll discuss one possible option in today's Iron Talk. Back in the day when the lion's share of new corn planters came with dry boxes for fertilizer or insecticide, there was no need for an alternative system. Many of the products that were being used were at close to 10 pound per acre rates and could be applied accurately enough using a conventional pulley and chain metering system. Today, things are different. Most farmers have given up the dry insecticide boxes in favor of either three bushel seed boxes or large central fill systems. If you would like to apply a dry insecticide, chances are you're looking at adding a smart box system to your existing planter. Smart box systems have some big advantages over the old ways of applying insecticide. First, AMVAC, the company that markets the smart box insecticides, has a program to help pay a portion of the cost of the system as you purchase smart box insecticides. Second, putting the insecticides in smart boxes eliminates much of your exposure risk to the insecticide you're using. That is a big reason that many people who are using smart boxes will never go back. Third, the smart box system has a more accurate system for metering low rates of insecticides. Some of the new ones are much more concentrated than the older insecticide products that we used to use. Depending on the product you choose, you may be able to load new smart boxes on your planter just once in the morning and plant all day long. If you want to use dry insecticide this year, there's still time to add a smart box system to your planter this winter. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. If a new machine storage building or shop has been on your mind, it's time to call Morton Buildings. Now through the end of February, take advantage of discount pricing during our Building Value Days sales event. For over 110 years, Morton has served the American farmer with quality buildings for a variety of uses that meet your needs and style. Give us a call or visit us online and join generations of customers who've discovered the quality and dependability of a Morton building. Wake up. Breakfast is served. Your roots crave pee. Most of your applied pee gets tied up in the soil, a natural phenomenon known as phosphorus fixation. Fix the problem with a veil phosphorus fertilizer enhancer. A veil makes more pee available to your roots. Here, here, and here. Increasing pee availability can lead to increased pee uptake in the plant. That's more pee, more pee, and more pee. More phosphorus for your crop can mean more results in your bin. An average of 9.6 bushels per acre of corn. Breakfast is served. Supercharge your pee with a veil. Whether you're feeding cattle, milking cows, or baling hay, the work on your farm is never done, which is why you need equipment that works as hard as you do. Get the efficiency and versatility you need with Case IH. From farm all compact and utility tractors to balers and mowers, all Case IH equipment is designed with one thing in mind, getting the job done. To learn more, visit caseih.com livestock. You can't fill a barrel any fuller than its lowest stave. And your crops can't do any better than the nutrient that's in shortest supply. Your yield potential is only as good as the weakest nutrient in your fertilizer program. Give your crops more than just NPK. Prescription apply all the micronutrients your crop needs. Each one customized for your crop's potential. MicroLink, linking yield to potential. If you watch Ag PhD TV, you'll love the new Ag PhD radio show each weekday on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. This is Darren Hefty. On the new Ag PhD radio program, we'll take live callers and provide the agronomic information and brotherly banter you've come to expect from Ag PhD. We'll feature a Back 40 segment where we talk to farmers and agronomists around the country to share what's going on with crop production. And it wouldn't be Ag PhD without addressing a pest of the day. Tune in to the Ag PhD radio show each weekday at 2 p.m. Central on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The all-new s commercial tender is the only tender on the market with poly tanks, giving you the capability to haul seed, fertilizer, water, or liquid fertilizer. Each cube can hold 300 units of seed, 2,000 gallons of liquid, or 300 cubic feet of fertilizer. Options include full-functioning wireless remote, stainless steel conveyors, and self-contained hydraulics. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for this week's show, but be sure to tune in again next time for another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Fertilizer is a term commonly used to describe plant food. Did you realize all growing plants require primary, secondary, and micronutrients in order to grow properly and produce food for humans? For more information, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.